Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Holy Trinity outside. Hopefully we'll still be able to have a few more weeks of this. Thank you all for your presence here. It's a blessing to be with you. Your bulletin right there, if you haven't, do you need one more? You've got one, okay. It's got everything you need to know for the whole service, plus announcements about what's happening here and uh, what I'm up to the week during the week, as well as how to get a hold of me throughout the week. So feel free to take that home with you. We won't be collecting it after the service. I'll have a couple of instructions about communion once we get to that part of the service. And I think that's it. So we'll just take a couple of deep breaths and arrive from all the places that we've been since we were last together. And then we'll begin. Again, welcome. Oh, too fast. Right, me. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom. Yes. Now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 You may be seated for the readings. Jody, do you want me up there? What? Should I come up there? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Our first reading this morning is from Exodus, a reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 16. If you would please read the parts that are in bold. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. 
I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will not recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds of the power of the Lord and the wonderful work he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He slid open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand. He led them with a cloudy day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great sea. He brought streams out of the cliffs and the waters gushed out like rivers. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make, me, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you, what was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied it himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exclaimed him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and under every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here with the spirit to save with God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But then he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. To those of you gathered here and those gathering from home, it's good to see you and to be with you and to pray with you. Every year about this time, I find myself wondering if the wisdom of the lectionary committee, who puts our readings together in our three-year cycle, really understood just how long this post-Pentecost season would be for this particular cycle in year A. I've been wondering if we could possibly introduce an intermission for this season, <laughs> just for a few weeks, you know, to stretch our gospel legs, explore the lenses of one of the other three, maybe even introduce a new liturgical color. How about orange? Or have a splash of red again? Wouldn't that be nice? We have been studying the gospel according to St. Matthew for the majority of the summer, 17 weeks to be exact. At this point, all of us should be experts in this text, this perspective, this narrative of the community who formed around these teachings of Jesus. So I hold those thoughts really quite lightly, to be honest, in one mind. And I hold the true gift of time that this season gives us like no other in my other mind. Like I mentioned in my sermon last week, these are difficult teachings gritty teachings that I'm sure make a lot of us wriggle in our seats, especially with the backdrop that all of us in the U.S. bring to this text, or at least that's what I bring with me today. Here in this pericope, verses 23 through 32, we meet Jesus in his last appearance in the temple, in a confrontation with the chief priests and the elders of the community, and even some Pharisees were present. We see this clever trap that, that they try to set for Jesus, and then the quick wit of Jesus, who bites back. By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority, they asked. And Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Are you ready? Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued. <laughs> of course they did. This is the age-old conundrum of endowed versus prescribed authority. Endowed meaning that which one is given or provided for by someone or something else. The Holy Spirit endows for holy orders the authority to pass down the faith of our tradition to the next generation versus prescribed authority, meaning that which is given by right or title or law. The church prescribes authority for how to carry out her mission through the canons and constitution of the church in conjunction with the rubrics of the Book of Common Prayer. The chief priests and elders are asking a technical question, and Jesus gives them an adaptive response. And so perhaps our adaptive invitation is to wonder, what does authority mean to you, to us, to me? As Episcopalians who stretch across 111 dioceses in regional areas in 17 nations, prescribed authority looks like this little thing called the General Convention, which is stitched into the canons of the church and the rubrics within the Book of Common Prayer and then lived out as a diocese, and then as a parish within a diocese. This mission is carried out through the endowment of authority given to each of you and each of and me through baptism. As Americans, particularly in North America, particularly in these United States, what does authority look like? Well, that's a loaded question right now, so let's just stick with the one that's infused with our baptism, shall we? <laughs> Endowed authority for us looks like a bicameral body of laity and clergy who come together by intervals and at a triennial interval. 
and then more locally, a convention of Episcopalians who reside in West Michigan, stitched together with our diocesan canons, and then lived down parish bylaws and ministry practices. This invitation from this morning's gospel, then, to me, is a wondering around the meaning of baptism, my friends, the meaning of authority to carry out God's mission of liberation and life and love through the waters of baptism and the strength of the Eucharist. It's a question of who gets to be in the arena here, making decisions, casting votes, having a voice about what we do, who we say we are, and how we live this out day to day. So who is that? Our prayer book seems to suggest that there are four orders of persons needed to carry out this unique mission. Bishops, priests, deacons, and laity within each of our churches. The teaching and authority of the church that we have been gifted comes from a mutual relationship between those orders working together for the kingdom reality dreamed about in these gospels. That kind of work can't be done by a bishop alone, nor by a deacon or priest working on their own. Neither can it truly be lived out into fully with laity alone. When any of these orders are missing in our church, we are diminished. Our light is less bright, our witness even compromised. As the body of baptized, how many we are, we are the ones called to be the hands and feet of Christ for the world in 2020, during a pandemic, during a general election year, with masks on, <laughs> that's you, that's me, that's us. We are the ones being invited into this morning's gospel to put on our endowed authority to live out the gospel in our daily lives with everyone we meet and all who are in our circles of influence to care for the widow, the orphan, the lonely, the hungry, the poor among us. To look out for the least, the last, and the lost to set aside partisan talking points and change the conversation to one of kingdom values, which are always loving, always life-giving, always liberating. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean our voices won't shake. But it does mean that if we don't, who is left holding the microphone? Who is left in the voting booths or standing with the victims of violence? Who is going to clothe the babies or help parents get the supplies they can't afford? Who is going to help them have <coughs> access to clean clothes? If not us, who? This is our work to do. This is the endowed authority you have been grafted into by virtue of your baptisms to live out this faith we talk about each Sunday. Friends, may you each, may we all, wrestle with this text over and over and over in the coming week. May we read it again and again and ask ourselves in what ways the Holy One is stirring in us to carry out their mission in this area, wherever our zip code lands us. Amen. 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 Together standing, let us proclaim the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, to God from to God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Michael, our presiding bishop, the standing committees of Eastern and Western Michigan, for our partner diocese and their bishop, Bonnie, Bishop of Michigan, Rayford, Bishop of Northern Michigan, Craig, Bishop of Northwest Lower Michigan, Synod of the LCA. We pray for all those in our diocese who are discerning calls to ministry, both lay and ordained. In particular, we pray for those in our diocese who are preparing for the sacred order of priests, including Dell, Rada, Eileen, Derek, Kurt, Joanna, and Joe. We pray also for those in our diocese who are preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Jim, Mark, and Chris. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. Pray for the missions and ministries of Plain Song Farm and Ministries, St. Mark's Atlanta, Phil Sykes, Priest in Charge. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our elected officials, especially for Donald, our president, and Gretchen, our governor, and for all elected persons serving the public. Grant them the wisdom and will to seek the common good. Caring for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. In our parish cycles of prayer, we remember Joseph Matthewson, John and Susan Mancarelli, Wes Muir, and Shar Rubio. We pray for all who will one day again use our spaces to bring about beauty and healing in our community. For our clergy and elected leaders, Kristen and Jody, our priests, Susan, Mike, Mary, Jim, Dee, Sam, Carol, members of the vestry, and we pray for our delegates and alternates to diocesan conventions. We give thanks to those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants Carol and Clint, John Mancarelli, and Susan Lunfoil as they begin another year. And we thank you for the love and witness of those beginning another year of married life. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We also pray for the missions and ministries of the local churches in Madison County. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for Bob, Rick, Susan, Tom, Blake, and his parents, Marty, Christina, Christopher, Mylene, Dick, John, Tom, John, Elizabeth,
Elizabeth, John, Pat, Nathan, Candy, and Stacy. We also pray for Wayne and Dana and all those who remain lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those remaining now. That your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with, with you. you. In a few moments when we uh, are done setting the table and praying the Eucharistic prayer, um, I will come to you so you can just stay put where you're at and I'll give you the bread. I just ask that you wait to lower your mask and receive until after I'm six feet away from you. That way we'll all stay safe. Please know that at this church there is no one who is ineligible or unwelcome to receive Eucharist at God's table. Our altar is the table of our loving God, a table set to feed all of creation through the love of Jesus Christ. You who are a part of that creation are most welcome, indeed invited, to partake. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. You may be seated. stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give him thanks and praise. and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. 
Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Mary, Tabitha, and Mary, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we serve a loving God and therefore are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, Christ our Christ Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Continuing with the post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your, of your Son, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm okay? Yeah. yeah.